Okay. Of the air. Okay. So, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm here just to uh, to show a bit what was the experience with the Pata track uh, for the at least for the validation part. And um, okay, just uh, of course a bit of background. Uh, the motivation that uh, let's say pushed the Pata track group to start exploring new resources. Regina resources is mainly in this plot, where uh, of course this is somebody say optimistic, somebody say pessimistic, but uh, at least is the idea that we um, of what we are going um, to have I mean, or to need in the future, at least at uh, CMS uh, HLT. And so at least I mean our aim is to fill this gap between what we would expect with a 10% increase of, per of uh, let's say performances from now to. 2022 and uh, so everything um, started in 2016 with the idea of offloading a part of the uh, let's say reconstruction my uh, reconstruction to GPU what you see here is this let's say time pie chart uh, regarding the different steps in uh, in um, at the CMS uh, uh, HLT you see the tracking the H reconstruction pixels and uh, this is actually calculated on a specific uh, run on a 2018 data uh, so it's let's say realistic very realistic with a pile up of about 50 what has been done um, let's say up to now everything started with pixel tracks global reconstruction of pixel tracks for the full workflow and uh, has moved uh, is still moving, and but has moved also to ECAL and HCAL local reconstruction that are basically based on the same kind of algorithms. And um, of course, two different approaches were uh, followed, and this also led to two different approaches for the, the validation of the of the um, let's say of the development. Starting with uh, with the with pixel tracks, so the main goal was just to reconstruct all uh, the. I mean to port all the chain from uh, the um, row unpacking to the to the pixel vertices and pixel tracks uh, to GPU, minimizing the data transfers, of course. And so you see here the workflow that are that been uh, adapted to run, let's say, I, um, with, with the same kernels both on GPU and on CPU. And uh, so let's say after the, the data have been copied, multiple kernels are run, and at the end the connection point that allows us to to make some validation with respect uh, to the legacy and also let's say for the developments is the fact that we feel at the end the same uh, structure that were there uh, let's say before the path track before path track so you, uh, we mean basically pixel tracks and pixel vertices and uh, so the validation is based, let's say, on this principle. And what we mean for validation is just is comparing results at data set level. So looking at, uh, let's say, basically physics performance, sorry, physics performance of the collection that we deliver. And um, this is done, let's say, in three stages. For each pull request within the, the path track development branch, let's say, with respect to CMSW reference, uh, compared to the reference in Spatatrack and comparing also the CPU and the GPU Spatatrack workflows that in principle should, should give it the, the same, exactly the same result. Of course, it is based on the already existing uh, validation in CMS and um, um, it has been mainly adapted to monitor new collections, to produce new plots and to check uh, um, specific, let's say, um, collections, specific um, tracks, for example, and it, of course it relies uh, on the DQN tools and on root uh, data formats uh, and all the chain that is in CMS basically. This has been fully automated in the sense that uh, um, it, it's basically one script as we will see and is very structured and uh, in, also in addition with respect to the standard CMS um, Validation includes uh, performance uh, plots, mainly of throughput. But just to have a feeling of what it is, uh, let's go to an example PR. This is a, 
up uh, done a few months ago, I think, yes. And this is as it appears on GitHub for the CMS Patatrack uh, repo. And basically, all the procedure is uh, happens to a single validate script by Andrea that has been developed uh, almost completely uh, by him. And um, that allows to compare multiple PRs or eventually local development if, if uh, no PR is a parse. So this, this workflow do basically um, creates the, the, the reference and the development areas. areas. Uh, you see here the CMS 11 pre 7 and the CMS path track. Then if the PR, APR is specified, it merges it directly in the development branch, build it and test it. And how we test it is basically running uh, different workflows. You can see here, them here like the uh, there is the, let's say the legacy pixel track reconstructions, so no pata track. The pixel track reconstruction with the Riemann feed, for example, so uh, from pata track running on the GPU and the one running on the CPU on uh, rail bulbs or central, uh, central samples. And uh, this automatically produces plots, uh, uh, that means basically physics performance plots and summary tables. These are automatically uploaded to your to the CERN web area, basically, and so they are browsable. You can check uh, here the, the link. And uh, of course, this I mean all of this is tested on different topologies and different uh, the detector condition. This is, is something that is uh, common anyway within CMS, CMS and it's not uh, track specific. And these are the metrics that uh, we use basically for the for the for the validation. You can see here there is the basically tracking efficiency, the tracking number of fakes and duplicates, the pools of the parameter of the track, the resolution, and uh, okay, these are a bit uh, small. So looking a bit, uh, zooming on let's say the efficiency, you can see here there is the comparison for the for the legacy C workflow, for the path of track uh, reference workflow, for the development one, and uh, well, for the reference we mean the um, still the one that is run on the legacy, um, let's say, branch, and uh, and the pull request testing. In this case, you don't see any difference with the, the part one because what a uh, technical pull request. But this is the metrics that we use basically. And um, of course, so there are also tables automatically produced and where you can see and compare, let's say, digit by digit eventually the differences. In addition to this, for the Cuba, uh, for the Qt enabled GPU workflows, uh, the, the pixel reconstruction job is run uh, multiple times under different QDMM checks, um, let's say, checks. Uh, the, the, Memory initialization is checked. Is checked if there is no memory leak, and uh, and so on. And uh, these reports and logs are produced, and also them are uploaded. And something slightly, I mean, something quite new at the end is the fact that we also test the throughput on data samples. So just to have, let's say, a real um, feeling on what uh, what would happen in HLT production. And a note, I didn't. Uh, uh, wrote it here, but all of these uh, scripts are basically are usually run, let's say 100% of the time run on the machines that at the end will eventually be the production machine for HLT at point five. And so the, the number of uh, EDM str and streams is scanned, and so in this way one can uh, keep trace and record. Uh, um, I feel the microphone of somebody, I don't know if it's mine or uh, there is some feedback. Anyway, so each defective, okay, so if each PR is traced and, uh, and recorded. And uh, at the end, so here you can see here the comparison between development and testing. And then the end what happens is that uh, the, um, this is automatically uploaded to the end the uh, Posted as a comment to the to the PR in order to have all the checks and eventually merge, as in this case was. As regards the calorimeter local reconstruction, the um, so 
in this case, the, 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 uh, the effort starts at quite later, but um, the idea is again to port uh, all, all the steps. It started with the, with the amplitude the reconstruction that is uh, basically the same for uh, H, Cal, and Decal, and uh, parallelizing it by Crystal. Uh, then also the unpacker was ported to GPU and the Rekit producer that uh, to, that uh, uses the amplitude that conferred, convert them in a DC count and then energies uh, was ported. In this case, the, um, the validation for ECAL and similarly for, for HCAL uh, is not as structured, let's say, as the one for pixel tracks. Uh, is in some way on the lower level, but uh, is rapidly evolving and is being developed by Andrea Massiloni. Um, this, and is performed, let's say, event by event. So uh, for each channel, so crystal by crystal, it uh, introduces new plots that were not used uh, before that are, let's say, these crystal by crystal plots and uh, compares, uh, let's say, the multi-fit amplitudes, number of rekits, uh, uh, so a series of metrics. You can see it. Uh, these are the scripts from uh, from uh, from uh, from Andrea, and the, the the approach is slightly different because in this case, uh, uh, the the CPU and the Patatag GPU workflows are run on the same events, uh, and the collection that we produce are uh, the the derivatives are written in the event and they are then compared, and so you can see here basically what's happening. And the plot that we have are something like this, where we compare the result uh, uh, for event by event. Uh, you can you can see no difference. I mean, the, the, the plots are completely overimposed. The ratio is always one. This is, for example, the amplitude, and this is the number of rekits uh, produced. So, just going to conclusion, and um, two different approaches have been followed for the different uh, for the say for the calorimeter and for the pixel tracks. The common ground is that uh, the main point to which, with which uh, we, we do comparison is using the um, physics performance plots. Uh, and uh, there are some features that have been inherited by CMS validation infrastructure, especially for the tracking part, and uh, they have been adapted to new collections and uh, requirements. And for the HCAL, this is based, let's say, on reconstructing both collections and comparing them event by event. Instead for pixel tracks, uh, in addition to what was there already before for the tracking, the validation has been basically fully automatized in the sense that still there is somebody that has to launch this job, but uh, all, the process, all the process goes smoothly uh, by itself. And then there is also this, this also allows us to do PR by PR validation in order to keep track of what's happening exactly. And uh, in addition, this is completely new. The computed the throughput for each new development is evaluated in order to know that we are not losing anything between the different, uh, let's say, uh, developments. And that's it from my point. Thank you, Rieno. Uh, so, are there some questions, comments? There are. A few in the live notes. So one of the question in the live notes uh, was uh, <laughs> about this uh, peer validation workflow that you implemented. Uh, how long uh, does it take for the validation to produce the result? Uh, and uh, yes. do you do you have to uh, your own runners that execute the code? So are you using the normal ones? Okay, yes, I mean, for the, for the timing, it takes something like uh, the order of hours, because it runs, uh, let's say, for the Monte Carlo seven workflow, for workflows on about 500 events, so it takes, uh, yes, let's say hours. And uh, I mean, this is not triggered automatically, it's simply, I mean, somebody has to access the machine and just push the button, I mean, launch the, the, the validation scripts. And then after that, it automatically is uploaded to the to the to GitHub and to the web area. Uh, so you better don't do that uh, on every single line of uh, code that changed, right? 
you probably want to combine a few changes in the single pool request or what? Yes, yes, basically, yes. I mean, let's say a pull request is not, it almost never a single line change. I mean, there is always a bit of, it's grouping a bit of a, a few commits, let's say at least. And so it is run. We run it for every, for every PR, basically, even if they are technical, just to be sure that everything is working smoothly. And I presume that just in the, uh, in, uh, just like in the previous presentation, um, sometimes that's a, uh, a different result is actually perfectly okay. Is, yes. that, is that true? Yes. Yes, yes, sometimes, yes. I mean, there are some PRs that were, uh, let's say, physics, um, I mean, that, the, that actual, for example, the one that introduced the Riemann fit, it actually showed different results because they were improving the resolution, you know, just to give an example. Uh, another question was that uh, the one related to the validation of runtime performance, that you already answered in, in the comment. Uh, um, uh, have you found the, the CI resources uh, suitable for checking the runtime performances as there are sometimes some shared resource that can be quite overloaded or mm. on different hardware? Or... Uh, no, I mean, by now, no. Everything went went, went, uh, went smoothly. Okay, but but you control the hardware that you are using, in fact, for the for the CI, or is it some shared resources that you don't have cont direct control on? Mm, I mean, I don't. Mm, we don't have direct control on that, but yes, I mean, manually we we check it, but or usually it's not so populated. Let's say. Okay. But this is, let's say this is uh, some. This is the same sort of hardware. There is not a big variety of hardware. No, no. It's, all, it's, all, it's typically the same hardware, let's say. Okay. Just because you know, we know that we will have that uh, in production, so we keep using this. Yeah, I think my question was in part motivated by the fact that you know, in validation, we can be doing different things, and that might require different types of resources. Um, so generally, uh, regressions in terms of performance, you don't need very many events to check whether that's happened or not. But you do need to make sure that you have a very stable hardware platform so that the results are comparable between different versions of the code. Um, when we have to do a, a validation based on a statistical comparison, then what's important is being able to get a sufficient number of events and you might not care um, so much about the exact CPU or GPU as long as it runs. So uh, just there, there are different aspects of the same problem. Sometimes you can solve both in one go. Sometimes you have to uh, sort of do different runs for each of them, I think. Mm 